My name is David Tran, and this is Lux TV, shedding and spreading light for the chiropractic student. We have chiropractor Dr. Billy DeMoss, AKA Billy D, AKA the godfather of chiropractic in Newport Beach, California. He's the founder of CalJam, Dead Chiropractic Society, and Spiz Magazine, and he does all of this while still serving the hell out of his practice members. Dr. Bill, welcome to Lux TV. Hey, I'm excited to be here this morning. Yeah, so let's get straight to it. Um, <laughs> all right. I, you know, everybody seems to know who you are, either on Facebook, on YouTube, but, um, but the students kind of want to know, how did you really get into chiropractic? Uh, I originally got into chiropractic because I was, uh, I can remember this real vividly. I was in the uh, basement of the science building at Cal State Fullerton. I was pre-dental and I'd already applied to some dental schools and somebody took a merit chart and threw it on the table and hopefully everybody knows what a merit chart is. If you don't, then you should uh, research that. But it's just a chart of effects, like if this vertebrae is subluxated, these are the kind of conditions you can see. And I was really, ba back, into, and back in the 70s, this was 1979 actually, probably m before many of you were born, <laughs> uh, I was really into nutrition. I was into juicing. I was into eating super healthy. And I was a biochemistry major. And I was really science-based at the time. And somebody threw that chart on the table and it made complete sense to me. And I go, you know, I can see how the, the brain and the nervous system runs all the organs and glands. And if there's any interference to that through subluxation, then there can be disease in the body. And I, it totally made sense to me. And then I talked to a lot of uh, dentists at the time. And I, you know, a lot of them loved what they did, but there was also some that were really just down on right. They were ornery and grumpy and, I, and they really weren't positive about their their profession and I went to just talk to a bunch of chiropractors afterwards and they were all seemed more vibrant and healthy and young and, and, and it seemed like something that I was really driven to do and so I went home and told my parents I was going to go to chiropractic school instead of dental school and the first thing my mom said was what you're wasting your life and I, I'm thinking wow that's kind of a positive note coming from you <laughs> you know because but they that, that's because they had always heard the stories about chiropractic that they were quacks and you know we, chiropractic has definitely grown since then but back in those days it was a you know when I first started practicing you know you heard the term quack a lot more than you hear now and, and it wasn't as readily accepted as it is now and uh, you know so I, I went to chiropractic school and the problem was I went to a school where I really didn't ever get any philosophy thereafter and actually I went into school I think I know, I don't think, I know with way more uh, chiropractic philosophy than I came out with. I mean, I at least went into school thinking that that nerve interference can cause disharmony in the body and, and then I get out of school and I'm, I'm, you know, focusing on low back pain only. I was even taught as a, a student that not to adjust cervical spine because it was uh, uh, obviously, not obviously, but we were taught that it was it could be dangerous and we, in pediatrics, you know, in our pediatrics class, we never even ever talked about adjusting children. And as, as you probably know, I mean, 50% of my practice is kids. So, you know, one of the big issues that's uh, up against us as a profession is is the, obviously the schools. And, and the schools are not turning out, as we, we're going to discuss, chiropractors. We're turning out more uh, physical therapists. And, I mean, chiropractic works. It's just when it doesn't work... Uh, Question its application, but never question the principle, as, as Clarence Gonstead said. And the more I started to, because when I got out of school, I totally floundered. I mean, I mean, and back then you could flounder and still make a living, but I was actually waiting tables to, uh, to help you know augment my income from chiropractic, which was sad. You know, after spending all that money to go to school and coming out of school with a lackluster education chiropractically, if sure I could diagnose the hell out of anything, but uh, as we both know, diagnosis means uh, if you break it down to its Latin derivative, two people that don't know you and the doctor, <laughs> or the patient and the doctor. Uh, so it wasn't until I went to DE and two years later, as I was convinced by some friends to go, because they actually saw some potential in me, and it was through getting philosophically dipped that I became the success that I've become over the years. I immediately went from struggling to barely see 100 patients a week to you know, explode to 350, 400 visits a week, up to 600, and we've done 1,000 a week here. And again, that's 
that's not a lot because I'm going to get on a call here in 15 minutes with Chris Zeno that sees 3,000 a week. So it puts everything in perspective. And, you know, I just want the students to understand that chiropractic is an amazing, amazing, miraculous profession. But, yeah, you have to believe in what you do to get those miracles. And, uh, I mean, I've been seeing some major miracles with some autistic kids that we're working with. And, you know, and I'm not treating them as an autistic. I'm not treating their ear infections. I basically do a chiropractic assessment, I, you know, and then I adjust them. And I let the body's inherent healing powers make the corrections that need to be made. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, like, I'm glad you kind of painted a picture of, like, your past because everyone just assumes, like, oh, you know, this is a really well-known chiropractor. You know, this is Billy DeMoss. And, you know, he's very successful. And they just assume that, you know, you just appeared – you know, adjusting people automatically, and and there's definitely a, a lot of hard work and perseverance to to get to where you're at today, for sure. No, I mean, and it was sad because, uh, you know, I've always been a really good people person, and and then what I think the school really groomed us to be was, you know, more white coat ish, uh, the real doctor, uh, professional, uh, above everybody. And and that's not me, you know. And when I finally came out of came out of my allopathetic shell, <laughs> my white coat shell with my little black bag, and and actually started to really connect with people as who I really was, and and show true concern and love for people rather than being, you know, this uh, technician, a diagnostician, uh, real doctor, uh, evidence based bullshit. Uh, when I finally got to a point where I trusted my own chiropractic skills and the and innate powers of the body to heal, that's when everything just exploded, you know? Because it, it's just amazing when, when you uh, actually apply chiropractic and you tell the story, and pe- so people get the story. It's, the story is so simple. I mean, it's like, you know, and, th- and then it just spreads like wildfire, you know? And it's like, you, if you were in my office yesterday, you would just—it was a complete bedlam, but it was good bedlam, <laughs> and it was just—it's just fun when there's so much energy in your office and there's kids everywhere and families and, uh, you know, for me to be pigeonholed into, into a low back practice where I'm doing hydroculators and interferential and uh, ultrasound and all the things that I used to do, and now all I do is adjust. And yeah, yeah, we teach them some stuff as far as rehab and exercises and stuff. And I'm big on teaching people how to eat. And we got a vaccine workshop next week. Mm-hmm. We just had a pregnancy, healthy pregnancy work. So I'm really big on just all the patient ed stuff in addition to adjusting people because I want people to really become their own doctors and, and empower them to take care of themselves. Because the reality is if we can teach them uh, self-care, I mean, they're going to need us less, but they're always going to need to brush their teeth and floss their teeth. And what I'm saying there is they're going to still need always to come in for regular chiropractic adjustments on a maintenance basis, not as a on a pain basis. And I, as soon as people really understand what, and that's my vision with CalGem, we'll probably talk about a little bit, is I want people to understand chiropractic elevating the vibratory tone in their nervous system and their body to, so they can express more of their life potential. And chiropractic is not about back pain. It's just like waiting to dr- put oil in your car when you're, until your oil light comes on. And that doesn't make sense to me from uh, a, even a mechanistic view. But from a philosophical, vitalistic view, chiropractic is about one of the five factors that people need to implement in their lives so that they can be a full expression of, 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 of what their innate potential is. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, one of the things that you kind of described was like, you know, how your office seems – uh, or uh, how your office is every single day where there's, you know, tons of kids and stuff like that. And I, I know that one of the things that I'm always asked on Facebook or maybe you'll see on Facebook posts is that people are always looking for tours, T O R, you know, they're always trying to find a, you know, a chiropractor in, you know, some zip code. And I know that you always get tagged in a bunch of those, but I mean, could you tell like the students what an actual definition of a tour really means? Well, it's so funny you ask that because you know, I've always uh, we were watching Cal Jam videos. Just that's what we do is in our office meetings now. We'll just watch like twenty minutes of like we watched Tim Young yesterday, and he he defined tour teacher of reality. And I go, that's a pretty good explanation for what a tour is. But I've always thought of a tour with somebody that's really kind of hardcore, philosophically based chiropractor, somebody that actually actually adjusts. Uh, that does a chiropractic analysis, not a medical diagnosis. Uh, 
just a real chiropractor, you know, somebody that moves bones. Because I, I don't know how many times I've had people that come into my practice that have been to other chiropractors and you adjust them and they go, what the hell was that? And I go, well, that's an adjustment. You told me you've been to chiropractors before. So just because some say, somebody says they're a chiropractor doesn't mean they're the fact they're adjusting. Or they, maybe they don't even you know believe in the principles of chiropractic. They may be doing physical therapy and colonics and maybe have a nutrition practice when in reality chiropractic is uh, using a chiropractic assessment and discerning where the levels of subluxation are and then applying specific chiropractic adjustments to those areas. And of course, I'm big on x-ray too. Yeah, you know, and like you want to be able to refer someone to a chiropractor that you can trust, you know, that you know. Exactly. Yeah, you know, and you know, it's it's experience that I've well, gotten. You have going. the same experience that they have in your office. Exactly, exactly, because you know we know it's such a powerful thing, and it could basically save the United States and in its horrible the healthcare world. system. Yeah, I, exactly. Um, this past uh, year, I was able to finally make it out to Cal Jam. It was an amazing experience. Um, bands playing and you know all this you know great stuff people coming from all around the world why should every student next year make Cal Jam their number one spot to to head to in the spring well like I was saying earlier it wasn't until I went to DE that I, I really transcended as a chiropractor uh, but it's just like I was at the wave this weekend and our band played there too and mm -hmm. the, the, the one of the things that people don't understand about seminars is it's it's a time for us to come together and bond as a family. And it was like, you know, we were up till 3.30 in the morning every night. And it's just, we all talk chiropractic the whole time. We're all loving each other. And it's just the coolest people in the world that go to these seminars. I mean, dirtbags and, and assholes don't go to these events. I mean, because they, they stay home and, and cry and bitch and moan about everything being so bad. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so fun for us, all of us that are excited about what we do, to get together. But... The other thing is, it, it it you go to these events and you hear like I I mean I heard uh you know Jeffrey Smith and I heard uh, Andrew Wakefield and it just fuels my already friggin' out of control fire my blast furnace of passion for what we need to get out to the world and, and you know people under I go dude you've been in practice twenty eight years you're still on fire the reason I'm on fire because I'm always going to stuff which just just further motivates me to to carry this crusade to the next level and by going to those events it just fans that fire and and, and I you know you're you're gonna get a basic science allopathic I'm gonna say pathetic education <laughs> in chiropractic school but you're not gonna get the the passion and love and and drive that you need like what you get from a seminar, and people call it rah rah. It's not rah rah. You're getting. I mean, we're gonna, we're going to have some badass dudes at Cal Jam this year. I mean, I've already asked. I mean, we brought Mercola on the line. He's. I uh, he just needs to get his contract in before I want to announce that. I mean, but I want to really diversify Cal Jam out to a more eclectic. Uh, I want to morph it out so that it's going to be something that the general public want to come to. Because I mean, we're we're already, you know, reaching to a point where I've got. Going to have probably twenty five hundred chiropractors at the event this year, but I want to start bringing the general public in because I want to grow this thing to stadium size. And if we can start bringing people, the general public to our event, I mean, because when you got a lineup like I'm going to have this year, the general public is going to want to come. And then, of course, they're going to get the chiropractic story. They're going to get the the one that's just like I explained, not a back pain model, not a neck pain, not a headache model, but a model about increasing the vibra vibra vibration. But also, I, I look at chiropractic as a part of a, a longevity life extension process and I want the world to understand that if they truly want to live not only at 100% potential but if they want to live longer chiropractic is something that just like you go to a dentist man you go to a dentist so that your teeth last longer why can't people get the same concept for their spine and their nervous system and if you take care of your nervous system obviously you're going to live longer but as students I mean, why wait till you get out of school like I did two years? I mean, you should get it. If you get start getting fed this stuff from now, you, you're going to get out of school running. You're going to be like a, a, a rocket taking off, man. And I know one of the questions you're going to get to uh, later is what was my advice for students is, yeah, get dipped now. Get That's why I, at DCS, which we're going to have tomorrow night, it's now it's half students that come to these things. And and I guarantee you, I because I know it, because all the students that come to DCS – once they graduate, are always the ones that are the most successful in their class because of the fact that they've got 
the increased skill sets to be better communicators. They've got the drive. We teach everything from you know how to the you know do new patient screenings. Every we teach you guys everything that you need to do to be ultimately successful. And that's the goal. Is if if you're not successful in practice, then people are out there dying because you're not doing what you need to do. So that's where the schools drop the ball. They don't teach you guys. They teach you all of this stuff to pass boards. Great. But let's teach you what you need to do so that you can go out and kick some butt and save the world. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, students don't don't even have an excuse not to even make it out there. Uh, I know Carolyn Griffin was all over Facebook, you know, uh, finding students sponsored tickets to, to go out there. You just pretty much have to, you know, buy your own flight to get there. Um, and there's plenty of students there that we, um, that we, you know, you can stay in hotel rooms and, you know, and, and, uh, just get your butt in those seats and out into uh, Costa Mesa for sure. Right. And bro, I, w I was a student once. I mean, I hear all the excuses that you can't afford to go. And I was just at the wave and I, I'm watching the students pound drinks, you know, $10 <laughs> drinks. Don't tell me you can't afford it. That's a bunch of bullshit. I mean, exactly. I was a student, you know, and I'm not going to tell you what I did, but I mean, I was a, you know, I partied and, and I spent money on things that probably weren't, uh, benefiting my lifestyle or maybe, uh, promoting my future but yeah it's all about balance and, and that's what I like people to understand about Cal Gym you can't probably read that but it says party, party. <laughs> it's, a, it's a celebration and you know that's I get a lot of flack for that that I brought party atmosphere to Cal <laughs> but I mean what's wrong with celebrating you? oh yeah there's just a lot of angry people in our profession and that's okay I'm just gonna walk right past those people but I want people to come and celebrate we gotta celebrate our wins you know we gotta celebrate the fact that we, this is the most awesome profession in the world we gotta celebrate the fact that we are changing the paradigms of health on the planet because there's no other there's no other profession that will do it you know we, we are the the ones that are gonna change the way people think about health and we're gonna we're challenging the the uh, status quo we're stat we're challenging the allopathic uh, I, I can't even say it the right way Pathic system of outside in, and we're really teaching people an an, an inside out uh, paradigm of health, and, and we're the only ones that will do it. We're the only ones going to talk about the devastation of vaccines. We're the only one that are really going to uh, teach them about the powers of a chiropractic adjustment. Yeah, you got people that manipulate, but again. They're looking at a pain-based model, and when that person's out of pain, they're released. I'm looking at it from a, a chiropractic, uh, structural, uh, mechanical. I'm looking at it from all the different parameters to increase the uh, potential of the spine and nervous system. And we're not basing that just on whether a person's in pain or out of pain. And that's the way physical therapists and, and an orthopedic model would look at treating uh, a person's spine and adjusting and manipulating and doing all the things that they do. But chiropractic is completely that's why I'm not worried about the physical therapist adjusting. I mean then they're not adjusting, they're manipulating and their and their whole premise for doing is exactly almost the opposite of what we do it for. Yeah. You know and um you know before we sign off, um the I wanted to ask you um if you could say one thing to students, something that students would remember six months from now after watching this interview, uh, something like they want to like the greatest takeaway that you would want uh, any student to to know, or you know something like they could write on a, a post-it note, put it on their uh, mirror or something like that. You know, what would you say to a student? You know what I mean. I've had associates in my office, and I mean after twenty-eight years of practice. And I just want you to know that you're going to work your ass off. But, I mean, I, mean, I was here until, I was working until 10 o'clock last night. But I love what I do, dude. Everything that I do, I, I mean, I have to kind of tear myself away and make myself go surfing sometimes because mm -hmm. I get so into this stuff. So I just want you to realize that you're going to work your ass off. And if you work your ass off, you're going to be more than, more than, more than rewarded. Uh, there's a, that universal law. And I'm not saying work stupid. I mean, work smart, you know, but you're going to go do talks. You're going to go do screenings. You're going to go teach the principles of chiropractic. And and I want you to understand you got to set big goals for yourself. And when you hit the goals, then reward yourself. Then go to Cal Jam. I mean, I want you to come to Cal Jam now, but – and then that's what I've always done. I've taken vacations. But like I've always said, as an old Pink Floyd saying, if you don't eat your meat, you don't get your pudding. You got to do the work to get the prize, and 
I just want you to understand that it's not going to be like somebody's going to like hand you a practice or you're going to just hang up your shingle and people are going to flock your office. It's a, it's a lot of work and, and, and I'm not trying to be discouraging, but it's fun work. I mean, I love telling the story. I love going doing screenings. I love people's light bulbs going off and, and, it, and you know, in the beginning, we worked our asses off, man. I mean, we were 24-7 chiropractors and, 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 you know, and it's so much fun to... I mean, this is like yesterday, which is rare. We had zero new patients. It's just like I'm freaking out when that happens because I love having that new energy come in. And, and if you go out and, and you're on fire from the heart to save people, not because you need new patients. It's, you can't do it. It's what's what they need and not what you need. And if you, you're really on fire and you work your ass off, your practice will explode right when you get out of school. And then once you get the practice built, then – you got to start taking some breaks. I'm really good about that. You got to learn to take some vacations because if you don't, you'll you'll self destruct. So work hard, play harder, but you don't get your mate or you don't get your pudding till you ate your mate. You know, thank you so much, Doctor Bill, for spending some time with us, sharing you know how you got into chiropractic, some of the, your greatest tips on how to become a tour, and um, why everyone should just immediately book their tickets to head over to CalJam. So, so thank you so much, Dr. Bill. Yeah, and the sooner you buy your tickets, you know you're better than your seats. It's oh, like, that's true. So, yeah. so no, yes, yeah. So if you want more information or want to connect with Dr. Billy DeMoss directly or to buy one of these kick-ass shirts, this is uh, Red Hot shirt. Chiropractor, like uh, check out the links below. Uh, every week I will be uploading a new interview with another giant in the chiropractic profession. If you like this video, please share it with your classmates. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. My name is David Train and this was Lux TV, shedding and spreading light for the chiropractic students. He's out. Rock and roll.